The Mercy Rescue Trust are a small charity based in Kitale in Kenya who support babies that have been abandoned or abused and helping to provide loving family homes for those children. The support given at Mercy, Mercy Rescue Trust ranges from babies all the way through to their forever families. Joining us to talk more about the Trust now is Centre Manager Jadida and Trustee of Mercy Rescue Trust, Kelly. Hello guys. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Um, and I will just sort of start off the interview by mentioning we're going to be talking about sort of potentially sensitive subjects today. Um, so just a warning um, to everybody, but it's a really important subject that we're going to be talking about. So I'm so glad that you could join us live here in the, in the studio as well, um, which is, is fantastic. Kelly, if I sort of kick off with you, could you start by telling us a little bit more about the centre and how Mercy Rescue Trust was formed? Sure. Um, so in 2007, there was a severe drought in northern Kenya, which caused a massive famine. So there were lots of people that were really struggling. There were babies that were dying and parents that couldn't look after their children. So um, a friend of mine who was, um, was volunteering with another charity who, who went out to northern Kenya to rescue abandoned babies. And our charity was formed at a later date to support her mission. And her family were from Grand Pound in Cornwall. So the charity was really formed in Grand Pound um, by most of by her family who put together a board of trustees and supported the mission. So that's how it started. And she stayed out there for a number of years. And when she returned, we then employed Jodida to carry on the work of, the, of Naomi. Amazing. Because I was, I was going to say, like, we're talking about um, an international um, charity here but the fact that there is that Cornish connection yes. here and the reason that you're here with us today yes. is because it's sort of been running from little yeah. old grand pound mm. in Cornwall. Yes yeah. so over the years the board of trustees has evolved slightly so we have different board members from the very beginning but there's still the connection to grand pound and to Cornwall so I come down as often as I can most years and Jadida when she's in the UK we come she comes to grand pound <laughs> And we have our charity meetings and we hold events here and uh, we have a lot of connections uh, to churches and other things that we like to come and say thank you to everybody who supports us. So it's quite important. We are very, it, it is from Grand Pound. Yeah. And you guys obviously met through the charity yes. work and that and you yes. obviously hit it off and, and it's almost created like a friendship as well, which yes. is, is lovely to see. Yes, we have. Um, Jedida came out. Uh, we employed her to, to run the center and at the time was working in South Africa. So we flew her up to Kenya and I flew out to meet her out there and we just formed yeah. an amazing friendship mm -hmm. um, over the last nine years. Oh, that's so nice. So we talk about Kitale being where mm -hmm. sort of the main mission is mm -hmm. and the, the main center. Can you tell us a little bit about the area there and what, what it's like? Jidaya lives there, so <laughs> she can tell you all about it. Yeah, so Kitale is um, kind of like an agricultural part of Kenya. Um, there's a lot of rain there, and um, it's where a lot of the maize is grown for the country. And um, it's a, a busy town, small, but it's busy. There's a lot, it's a, got a lot of population there. Um, and you've got the wealthy parts, but then you've also got obviously the parts that are very poor. So it's got a mixture of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And sort of, wait, can you sort of briefly outline some of us as the manager, um, mm. some of the support that you provide at the center? Yeah, so we are actually, um, we have four different parts of what we do in Kenya. So we have the center, which is what we kind of call our rescue center. And it's where we give the immediate care to any baby that comes into the center. So if a baby gets rescued from um, the hospital or even found from um, a maize field, they'll come straight to the, uh, to the center where we'll give them medical care. We'll make sure that, you know, they're being fed well and we just try and get them up to, you know, up to good health and in a good place. Um, and then from there, when they're healthy, we then make sure that they are placed in one of our staff teams who are out in the community ready to be a foster parent. So they go to one of our um, staff members to be a foster parent and they get looked after there while we research their case, whether that means they go back to their biological family or we try and find a new family for them. So um, that's basically the main gist of what we do for each baby that comes through our doors. It's incredible really. And, and am I right in thinking that you're sort of, you're there to support anyone and everyone? Your doors are 
open door policy as such? Open door policy, but we try and focus mainly on babies um, because we know it's a special field. Um, babies, uh, looking after babies is expensive. You've got formula milk, you've got yeah. the diapers, you know, and so we know that that's a special field. And also it's 24 seven, you can't go to sleep at night. Yeah. <laughs> you don't turn off. So we know that it's a different kind of field. So we like to focus on that um, so that we can give um, young babies the best care that we can. And it's, it's amazing because you cover such a range. So we've, we've touched on sort of the Baby Rescue Centre itself and then the foster care programme that mm -hmm. you also run mm -hmm. through that. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, the fostering side of it, how that works? Yeah, so the fostering programme began during COVID, actually. Um, when COVID hit, we realised that we needed to do something different um, at the centre. We had 20 babies at the centre, or more at times, um, and when COVID COVID was in its biggest form, we thought, how are we going to protect everyone if the, you know, if it comes into the center? Um, and so we decided that each staff member would take a baby home to their family so that the staff could be one at home with their own family. The kids were all home from school, so they could be at home, but they also had one of our babies to care. And while they were doing this program, we noticed that the babies were just flourishing, the staff were enjoying life, they no longer had to come into work and do shifts and night shifts and then worry about their children back at home. They were already at home, you know, yeah. and it also gave them opportunities to do a little side business. So some ladies um, started a vegetable shop outside their house. So they had the baby with them while selling some, you know, vegetables to make a bit of extra money. So it just worked out so well, we thought, we need to continue this. Mm. This is a really good idea. So, you know, just even health wise, the babies were no longer in a 20, you know, in a room full of 20 other babies. So one small baby would get a cold and then spread it to everyone else. That wasn't happening anymore. So yeah. uh -huh. it just it just worked out perfectly for everyone. And so um, and the whole family gets involved, you know, this one baby becomes a part of this family that it's loved by, you know, the parents, it's loved by the kids in that family. So it just, yeah, it's, we, we really enjoy doing this program now. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like almost like the perfect setup as well, because I feel like it takes a certain type of person, loving, caring <laughs> type of person yeah. to be in a role like this um yeah. you know because it is a big ask you mm. asking somebody to take a baby and introduce them mm. to their own family as well isn't it we mm. are so thankful for um the team that we have we have an amazing local kenyan team that work for us that just give the best care to our babies and some of them have even committed permanently to some of these kids um, and become wow. their mom permanently so we're just so grateful for the love that we have in our team yeah. Some of the team we've had from the very beginning as well, so it's expanded, but we still have a team that have been with us from 2007, they've been with us the whole time. That's incredible. Mm. It's, it just sounds like you guys are doing such amazing work. What about the home base care programme? So that is when we're able to reunite a child back with their biological family that um, usually we can only do that um, by supporting them because the biological families usually come from a poor background. Maybe they're struggling already. So to reconnect them with their family means so that, that we're adding on another mouth to feed. Yeah. And so the only way we can do that is if we actually support them. So we'll, education in Kenya is very expensive, unfortunately. And so um, we try and help them with education fees. We try and help them with maybe a food parcel a month or we try and find, help them by buying school uniform or you know workbooks that they need for school so that the child can still stay at home, still belong in their community, have that identity, um, but with our support. Yeah, and, and Kelly, it sounds like this is, this is, we're not just talking medical support here of yeah. um, somebody you know taking in a child and helping them with their health and their, their well-being, but we're talking um, that sort of, extras as well just those little details you mentioned there. yes we That's we hard. didn't really want to ever have a big orphanage um there is a big demand there's a big need for it in kenya but we didn't want to have a, an orphanage because it's for us it's really important that child a child feels like it's part of a family um, and actually we know that babies need to form attachments um, yeah. very very early on so if they're in an orphanage it's very difficult for them to do that so the model that we use now trying to find their natural family or trying to put them with a, a new family a forever family or mm. with our staff as a temporary family they are able to form attachments and that's a really important part of learning and development 
and sort of the word forever family as well mm -hmm. is so important is it because mm -hmm. nobody wants the disruption of being placed in a in a care environment and then to have to unsettle that and move mm -hmm. again you want as little yeah. movement as possible so mm -hmm. what do you do to ensure that they're going to the right places yeah so the f the focus is to try and get them back to their biological families um and but when that doesn't happen when we can't find any biological families then we um, look for permanent local families so that's either going to be adoption um, or permanent fostering we call it um, and we have uh, lots of different checkups um, little in interviews, little you know discussions right. with parents who come forward saying that they want to have a child in their family, um, and we develop a strong relationship with them so that we know they're the right people, um, that they're you know in the right place um, and have the right heart for these children. Because as you said, we want we don't want to disrupt these children's lives any more than they already have been, and so we work really hard. Hard. We have a team of social workers that work really hard to make sure that they're going to the right place. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And obviously over the past sort of 12 months, two years, mm -hmm. um, with everything that's been going on in the world, you know, from COVID to the current cost of living crisis, um, how have you guys managed within the centre to sort of carry on? So we've always raised money through monthly donations. Um, our charity is uh, completely non-profit. None of us from the UK um, take any money. We don't um, pay ourselves for doing this. We pay the staff in Kenya. So all of our um, money is raised through donations. Oh. We have some very generous donors. We, we do actually have a lot of support from church groups. Um, and there's some other organizations. There's some, we have some very, very um, good, generous donations. But we depend on people to do fundraising events and to raise money. And over COVID and during lockdown, we've really struggled because there's mm -hmm. been no big events to go in to go and fundraise. So our bank account is struggling slightly at the moment. Um, we raise a, a really good amount per month, but it's only half of what we need. Right. So um, we do get our top up every year from gift aid, but it's not enough to cover costs. So at the moment, we are in a bit of a position where we need to raise some more money. We mm -hmm. have put out an SOS. And, that's, and people have been very generous and have responded to that. So we have been able to raise a nice amount of money, but we do need to increase our monthly revenue. And that's at the moment, that's our biggest focus is to increase the monthly revenue so that we can keep doing what we're doing. Absolutely. It's a very important subject and hopefully by coming on mm -hmm. here today as well we can help sort of drum up some support mm -hmm. for you guys yeah that's what we're looking to do we're looking to to network a bit more to get a bit further you know we, we come down to cornwall and we, we say thank you to all the people that do support us but we need more we need more and we're yeah. we're getting out further we've been uh, to events this week in litchfield which has been amazing we've met some amazing people mm -hmm. that are so generous um so they, they're the kind of things that we're hoping to get back out to do now that lockdown is over and we can actually get back out and see people face to face yeah and obviously um your sort of charity supports so many people within the center but i want to know like who supports you guys and like who supports mercy rescue trust do you have sort of those main sort of funders or is it just whatever donations you can get we do have a lot of people that sign up to monthly giving right. um, we actually have a lot of support in in, in switzerland as well which is mm. through connections um of jadida which has been amazing for us um, but mostly it's uh, monthly donations people sign up um, and just give as much as they can whether it's five pounds or 50 pounds every single bit helps and that's what we have depended on since we started yeah and this is the problem now we live in like we touched on briefly there the we're living in this cost of living crisis yeah. where it's so hard for everyday people. We see it here at Chaos, you know, the, the food banks and people mm -hmm. coming for, for food support. It's so hard, but there are other people out there who are able to support. Mm, so yes. it's, it's getting the word out, isn't it? That Yeah. Yeah. And I think what we might look to do is ask for small amounts of money, but from a lot of people. And mm. if we can get as many people as we can to just give £10 a month, that £10 makes all the difference to our children, to our babies. So that's yeah. what we're hoping to do now. And I think what's key is trying to get our name out there to you know, increase our profile. Yeah. We're only a very small charity, mm -hmm. um, and so we need to try and get you know, other people to know about us and yeah. what we do. So you, you, know, you never know who else is out there who might be touched and want yeah. to help us. Mm -hmm. And you have quite a dedicated team, obviously, back yes. at the centre mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, 
they're incredibly hard working. Are you able to like employ those those staff or are mostly volunteers? All the Kenyans are employed by us. Um, so they depend on us for, you know, their salary. Um, and, you know, that's why it's so important, not just for the kids, but also for the staff and their families that mm -hmm. we can keep going. Because we don't just, you know, we're not just changing the lives of the kids that we rescue. We're also, you know, giving employment opportunities for mm -hmm. um, and Kenyans. And their children and, as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we try our hardest to support um, with their education where we can. We want everyone to have a really good education. Yeah. And as for um, obviously fundraising being the main target of, of your mission at the moment, um, where do you see this going? Like, what are the goals for the charity? Where would you like to see? What would you like to see in the future? We would like to have more, um, ha be able to take in more babies um, at any one time. When we used to have the baby rescue centre, we used to have up to thirty babies in the centre, so it was. Um, lively to say the least <laughs> um, but as Jadida said it actually works so much better for each child when they're out with a family so we would like to be able to employ more families to do the foster care system that we do um, but that all comes at a cost so yeah. we will that's that at the moment we just need to be able to fundraise to pay for what we are doing with the future goal being to employ more people to help us do that yeah, it's definitely needed, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And um, Jadida, you sort of touched on sort of off camera before we started that you've been making the most of your trip here in Cornwall. Um, you've been doing speeches in sort of schools and yeah. churches. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's been a busy time. I came here for a rest and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been on tour, basically. <laughs> but it's all been fun. Um, yeah, so I've been uh, talking at my, I have my local church um, in up in Chester. Um, and then I've been talking at another church, um, just churches around that have connections with us anyway and support us anyway. But also trying to get out there to new, you know, different people. Um, we tried, uh, we had a little stand at um, an exhibition in London, which is based based on um, churches getting together and, you know, sharing other different missions that are out there. So we had to stand there to try and get out there. My brother, um, bless him, has a choir that he directs. So he put on a show with his choir wow. in Litchfield um, and that uh, also was able to raise our profile there in Litchfield. So, yeah, just going everywhere that, you know, is open to us and yeah. trying to like just spread what we do and just to see because uh, we're so passionate about what we do. We so believe in what we do and how we're changing lives with these babies that we don't want it to, you know, don't want it to stop. So trying our hardest just to get out there and yeah. And I have my little daughter with me Aww. as well. It's her first time over to, uh, to England and she's five. So she's also been on tour as well. Just loving every moment. <laughs> I love that uh, yeah. description. Mercy Rescue Trust on tour. Yeah. It's almost got a ring to it, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, but you know just sort of echoing what we've already said really but it's just amazing the work that you guys are doing i'm so it's so great that here at chaos we can help sort of hopefully shine a light on your platform as well and help to grow or encourage mm -hmm. donations um mm -hmm. just on a final note i want to give you the opportunity to plug and push as much <laughs> as you can so where can people find you i believe you have a facebook page we do we have facebook instagram twitter and linkedin um, mostly it's going to be Facebook and Instagram that we that we use, but we also have a website. You can donate um, on the website um, or you can set up a standing order, which is what we really want people to do is set up a monthly donation. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. Yeah. Everything is going to help. And if, of, you know, if you're a taxpayer, we get gift aid as well. So tick that box. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the aim at the moment is to increase our monthly revenue and then we can keep doing this yeah. um, for as long as we can. Well, I really hope, you know, something more comes of this and you get that sort of financial stability because the work at the centre just sounds fantastic. Thank and you. Yeah, just thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your um, mission with Mercy Rescue Trust. Thank so, you. Thank, thank you, you for having us. us. Thank you. <laughs> At the Mercy Rescue Centre, we rescue babies who have been abandoned or are in vulnerable situations. We take care of them temporarily while we investigate the baby's story until we can find a loving forever family. Since the pandemic, we have had to change the way we care for the babies we rescue whilst they're in our care. We decided to place the babies with the staff in their homes. 
This was to protect the staff by reducing the need to travel to and from work and enable them to stay at home with their children while schools were closed. The baby will remain with their staff parent until they are placed in a permanent family. We have seen so many benefits during this type of care that it has made us think of continuing this way even after the pandemic restrictions are over. Uh, I've really embraced the new direction and I'm very positive about it because the staff's family, they are happy because their moms at home and the husbands are very happy because their wives are at home because they used to come for night shifts so they rarely did see their wives. And also the babies are doing very well with the family because uh, they have a good bond with the foster mom and they are growing well, the milestones are well, the, like the case of sickness are no longer there because when they were at the center they, we had like colds, uh, diarrhea and now at home it is really well, because there's no many babies, you are doing you are doing one on one with the with the baby, and it is well. I can say it's it's perfect. The kids have like they know their person. When you go visit them, you can't even take a baby. It's like who is this person? And it's really done as well. And I'm really happy about it. Uh, David has been a, a joy to our family very much because having a small kid and playing with the with the other kids it's very it's very exciting sometimes you can just sit and you and you see how david reacts and you find just all all the family members laughing and that one brings joy and actually we feel that we, we continue we still want to continue having him in fact my children ask me if david goes Will they bring another one? Because last time we had we had Anna, Alice, and then now came David. David was so small, but now with the age, everybody just wants to carry David all the time. Even when he is asleep, they want to carry him. They want to wake him up. So it's like it's like bringing happiness to the family too. We would really like to make this program a permanent situation for Mercy Rescue. The numbers of babies that we need to rescue are increasing. Due to the pandemic, teen pregnancies are rising in Kenya. And we already know through links from different hospitals that there are cases of uh, desperate situations where um, it is culturally unacceptable for them to keep the babies. So we know these babies will be coming to us. The benefits of this program are huge to everyone involved. Please consider supporting us to keep this program alive.